crucial time for the seal pups. They're vulnerable, hungry infants who rely completely on their mothers for milk. And the mums must rely on their skills at hunting. To get a sense of their struggle, I've got to get wet. Like us, seals are warm-blooded, but they've got a thick layer of blubber insulating them from the chilly seas. Watching them swim, you see their streamlined bodies glide forward with the simple flick of a flipper, conserving precious energy. A seal spend most of their time underwater, so their eyes are beautifully adapted to flicks in the water, and also they work very well at low light conditions, ideal for the murky depths below. And if it's too murky to make anything out, they feel their way with sensitive whiskers, hoping for a tickle from their prey. through this pinch point. The fearsome current makes it ideal for this tidal turbine. To check the turbine won't block their way, the animal's movements have been monitored with electronic tags. Tagging very shy seals is easier said than done. The only way is to ambush them. It might look extreme, but it causes little stress to these slippery customers. The transmitters are glued to the fur, a job that's timed so the tags fall off when a seal sheds its winter coat. That is a big tag, isn't it? And half of it is battery. Well, as far as we're concerned, energy is everything. We have to have a large battery here which will last the six months that this tag will collect and send information. The largest expanse of intertidal mudflats in Britain covers 120 square miles. A long detour, unless you brave the perilous path over the sand. Before the railway arrived, horse-drawn carriages sometimes got stuck with tragic results as they tried to race across the mud. sandbanks feel so solid I can see why people might think about taking a shortcut across them but they're also incredibly treacherous the siren warns the unwary that the tide's turning it rushes in at around nine miles an hour twice the speed of a brisk walk flooding the bay in up to 30 foot of water and a hidden danger lurks to hold you fast as the sea surges in quicksand into a sticky sludge that can cement you to the spot, unable to escape its grip. To see exactly what I'll be getting myself into, we're making some DIY quicksand. Sedimentologist Jeff Peekle and his team from Leeds University are building up layers of sand which can be saturated with water flowing in from underneath. Well, you've got a tube of experimental quicksand here but what is it when it occurs naturally i mean quicksand is really where you you change from a solid state into a liquid state 
really rapidly, almost instantaneously. And can it be any type of sand to begin with then that's just got water flowing through it? Uh, no, I mean, it, it needs one with lots of holes in, so it needs to be nice uh, round grains, I ideally all grains of the same size.